my name is Rebecca Powers with SLCT, and here is what's happening in Sterling and Lancaster. Learn to play pickleball at the Lancaster Community Center. Pickleball is a sport that combines tennis, badminton, and ping pong, and is a low-impact sport for any age. For more information on when lessons are taking place, call the center at 978-368-4355. The Friends of the Thayer Memorial Library will hold their annual book sale September 30th, through October 1st at the Lancaster Town Hall. For more information, visit www.thayermemoriallibrary.org. There will be a Lancaster Flu Clinic at the Lancaster Community Center on October 4th from 2.30 to 6.30 p.m. No appointment is necessary, but please bring your insurance card or information. If you have any questions, call 978-772-3335. I'm Lex Thomas, editor of Sterling Meeting House News and editor-at-large at Sterling Lancaster Community Television. And I am pleased to be here today with Lancaster Town Administrator Orlando Pacheco. Welcome, Orlando. Thank you. And here in Lancaster, it's that time of the year again. That's right. It is special town meeting time. For first Monday in October is in October. rapidly approaching. It absolutely is. And so I wanted to give our viewers and you an opportunity to just uh, find out about and for you to explain what is on the warrant and what town residents and voters can expect. Great, well, appreciate the opportunity because obviously we, we're always looking to just find mediums to get more, more information out to the public, so thank sure. you. So let's talk about the first article here now, talking here about amending the fiscal year 2018 operating budget. What can people expect here? It will just be a balanced budget um, that we think voters will, will have no, no issues with. But the budget that was approved at annual town meeting was balanced by using reserve funds um, because of re revenue uncertainty as the town votes its budget in May, but the state doesn't really finalize its budget till the end of June, in some cases into July. Uh, so this gives us an opportunity to clean it up, to balance it without the use of reserve funds, and then just so the budget stands on its own. So it'll, it'll be a balanced budget, um, and uh, a copy of it will be available on the town's website for review. Very good. Now, Article 2, this is the capital expenditures, um, same, same sort of thing? Well, what, what happens is we have a better idea of what we can spend for capital after our operating budget is finalized. And so we have just a couple of different... Um, Articles here. It's not a lot of capital. Not all of it is on the tax base. Some of it is water, but um, the big one will be uh, appropriating a hundred thousand dollars to cover the moving expenses from town hall to the Prescott building when it's done, and we expect to be in the building well in advance of the end of the fiscal year. Um, we are also looking to develop a trail network that connects Bartlett Pond to the town forest, and so we're starting that design process with seventy-five thousand uh, dollars. $100,000 uh, to start the design, engineering, and permitting of the Neck Road water main and $50,000 for the new water source we're hoping to bring online. And then we're going to start slowly, but over time, doing some tree cutting in the cemeteries. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're starting that with a modest $10,000 and we will evaluate more of that as time goes on. But that, that's what people can expect and some of that stuff will be, like tree cutting, be recurring over time. But sure. um, you know, a, a more of a phased in approach. Good. Article 3, Finance Committee and Board of Selectmen, what is that about? The, so this is to fund a contribution to the OPEB Trust, which is the other post-employment benefits, which is essentially setting aside money for retiree health care as part of um, the Governmental Standards Accounting Board Finance Regulation. Um, so right now we are not mandated to fund the liability. It's just accounted for on the books. But at some point we would, and we're just trying to stay ahead of that. Uh, Article 4, Solar Enterprise, Finance Committee and Board of Selectmen will be uh, speaking to that. What's yes. That one so when we built the solar farm on Lunenburg Road, um, we originally authorized $2.5 million. The project itself actually ended up costing just over $2 million. And so what we're doing is we're, we're rescinding the the debt from what was authorized to what the actual amount was. And that way we don't have this almost half a million dollars floating out there okay. that we were eligible to borrow for. Sure. So that's very much to the advantage. It is. Absolutely. Terrific. Um, Article 5, pay bills of prior fiscal year. That seems rather important. It, 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 it is if you're the vendor. Sure. Uh, um, yeah, of course. So when we, and sometimes this happens at the end of the fiscal year, a bill will come in late. 
we will stop paying bills for the previous fiscal year by a particular date. In our case, I think we go through August 15th. If we receive a bill after August 15th for the prior fiscal year, we do not pay it. We actually seek authorization from town meeting. We need nine tenths of town meeting to authorize um, that expenditure. Um, and so this is, doesn't happen every year. Right. Usually we have one or two every year. Sure. Um, in this case, it's a legal bill and uh, uh, a national grid bill. Good. All right. Now, let's talk about Article 6. This is the local option meals tax. Um, let's talk about that. Let's yeah. So the, the select board and, and the finance committee have had some discussions about it. Particularly, the select board was concerned that we may be missing an opportunity for some revenue here. And I think that based on the Department of Revenue projections, somewhere close to $50,000, um, I think between forty-five dollars and $50,000 was the projected number uh, that we would receive from meals tax revenue um, if we implemented it. And so I think that the purpose here is to just get it in front of the, the voters and see what they'd like to do with it. I don't think the selectmen is necessarily strongly endorsing one direction or the other other than it's an opportunity. We think you should know about it. Um, whether you choose to exercise your option is, is up to you. Now, this is dealing with restaurant meals, yes. right? So then how would that, how would uh, residents then see, see that in action? So the, the, the restaurant, whichever, whichever place you went to, um, or whichever food establishment, I should say, um, would be required to add an additional 0 0.075 tax onto the existing meal tax. Um, and so that's seven cents for, for every dollar. Sure. And do you have a sense at this point of what, how much now you, you threw around? The, maybe that, that's based on the Department of Revenue right. projection okay. from the sales that were reported by, by those vendors from the previous year. Sure. Okay. Now with Article 7, we have local option room occupancy excise. What is yep. that about? S a similar, similar mm -hmm. setup. Um, except it would impact uh, the lodging tax as opposed to um, the meals tax. And this is something that we're looking at as there have been potential discussions about um, hotels or motels being cited in North Lancaster as part of future development. And so um, it would be uh, an opportunity we'd want to take advantage of if that were the case. Sure. Now we've got a number of articles here that uh, are dealing with the sale of, uh, of buildings. We've got articles 8 right through uh, Article 11. Um, do you want to talk about those? Sure. So Article 8 is, um, deals with the surplusing and sale of the Memorial School. Now that's not necessarily to say that the town is going to sell the building. In fact, I don't think that's our intent at this point. But we do need to declare it surplus and available for disposition in order to encourage a private third party to undertake any redevelopment options. And so this is just part of that process. There's no particular development in mind um, other than this would be a step in the process to do that. And it would be a step in the process then of letting uh, potential mm -hmm. uh, buyers come in and realize that this is available. Absolutely. I think right now what, what the committee has looked at is some long-term lease options. Um, but again, we can't do that without getting approval from town meeting first, um, especially if it were going to be something longer than 30 years, which could very well be the case right. given how much capital somebody may have to put into the building. It would be a while before they get to see a return. Sure. Now, are there any restrictions on what kind of business or what kind of operation? Well, right now it's, it's zone residential. Um, but, you know, that, that's all fluid based on the proposals that are there. We certainly have discussions with our planning department and our, and our zoning officer and our building department, public safety officials, to see what, what is really feasible there and if there needs to be a zoning change or maybe more so just um, a, an easing of the zoning through variance or special permit. We could do that, too. And now with Article 9, we're looking at the town hall. Yes, similar, similar scenario. Um, if we're moving into the Prescott building, the idea would be not to let this building sit vacant for too long. And so trying to encourage some sort of secondary use would be, would be good. And I think in both cases, Memorial School and Town Hall, we're looking at developing some sort of request for proposals that we could put out to the market and see what kind of responses we get. Um, Article 10, uh, this is vacant land, the Fort Palm Road. It is vacant land that would be sold to remain vacant land. So this is in particular, we're looking at um, selling this to the Shirley Water District as part of their ability to site a well. Um, so it is currently conservation land. It would remain conservation land. 
um, but in order for us to move forward with the sale, um, we're, we're just seeking town meeting approval. Okay. Now, vacant land also, Article 11, on Packard Street. Yes, that is vacant land that may or may not remain vacant land, um, but it is where the DPW had a, formerly had a storage shed that was taken down about a year ago. Um, we're looking to just sell that property um, to get it back on the tax rolls, preferably to an abutter. It, in its current form, it's not buildable. I, I, if you attached it maybe to another property, it could be. Uh, but again, it's not doing the taxpayers any good sitting there vacant, sure. owned by the town. Now, Article 12, now the opposite side of that coin, a coin land purchase. Well, conservation where we dispose and sell property because of, for economic reasons, there's also reasons why we purchase property sometimes um, uh, for, for particular reasons. In this case, it's to add on to the town forest. There's a parcel um, that is in the middle of the town forest that we would like to acquire uh, as part of our just land conservation efforts. We've come to an agreement with the landowner. We've applied for some grants. Um, the purchase price of that property is going to be $61,000. We think we'll get a grant for it, but we do need town meeting to authorize to purchase with or without any grant funds. Um, and hopefully we get the grant and we're reimbursed for all the costs. And then the uh, final article, I believe, is uh, one that of course is uh, controversial just everywhere right now. Yep. It's a subject of, of a lot of debate uh, around uh, the state. And this is of course dealing with uh, recreational marijuana retailers and Post moratorium here in Article yeah. 13. And it, it's important that we show the distinction that this is not impacting medical marijuana, but just simply the recreational side. Um, and it, it does get controversial. Part of it is because the voters have approved this, and now you have municipalities, at least some throughout the state, saying we're not going to allow this. And I, I think it's important to make a distinction as to what the goal of the planning board is here. It's not a permanent ban on recreational marijuana but simply a one-year moratorium to give the planning board a little bit more time to determine where to zone it appropriately within the town. And so that's different than a ban. Now, I'm not saying that a ban couldn't come later on down the line. I don't think that's the intention here right now. Um, so what this is, is a temporary moratorium uh, for one year um, from any retail recreational establishment. Um, and I, I would think probably by the annual town meeting in May next year, you will see either some zoning or some other mechanism as it, re as it relates to retail. So this almost seems more of an information gathering sort of uh, I think so. hiatus I, that I people think, are looking for. And it, it, to be honest, I think part of what the planning board may be looking for is some more feedback from the public. Right. Um, but I think there, there is some concern that if we don't zone some place for it, that it may open us up later on down the line to it being cited somewhere where it may not be right. appropriate at all. And of course, what we're looking for as well is, is state legislation on this and state mm -hmm. information from Absolutely. the state as well. So. And um, I think that that's just starting to sort of yes. unfold right now. So we think the timing of the, the moratorium may be good, mm -hmm. um, but a permanent solution is not something that is right now in the works. Sure. And what is in fact your final article, amending water withdrawal bylaw? Uh, talk about this, please. So, all we're doing is reclassifying what a surface water body is. And it's uh, essentially taking into account um, quarry operations as a surface, surface water body, as well as your traditional lakes, ponds, and streams, and that sort of thing. Um, so, it's primarily designed to give the Conservation Commission a little bit more control over monitoring monitoring the Keating Quarry. Very good. Now, the special town meeting is when? It is Monday, October 2nd at 7 p.m. Mary Rollinson uh, Auditorium, and we hope, uh, we hope as many voters uh, can, can make it as possible. Of course. It's really important for people to come out and get involved, and uh, that's what you're really looking for here. You're looking for the voters. Absolutely. For, yes. Now, who can attend? Any registered voter? Any registered voter can attend and participate who met the town clerk's deadline for registration, for voter registration. Now, is there a way that people can get hold of the warrant beforehand? Before yes, you... it's available on our website. Okay. Uh, and it is posted in five various locations within the town. 
Very good, yeah. So that's important too. I think when people come and they know what the issues are and they know, you know what is going to be up for discussion, it, it helps people also think in advance about what yep. their responses are. And we're certainly going to be prepared to present information on every article at town meeting, but certainly residents who have questions, feel free to email um, any of the relevant departments or myself directly. We're happy to answer any questions, concerns you may have. But um, more importantly, it's your government. Come out, take control of it. Terrific. Thank you so much, Orlando. Next. Always a pleasure. Thank All you. Right. The Sterling Recreation Department's Fall and Winter Activities list is now out and registration has begun. To see the full list of activities offered, visit www.sterlingrec.com. The 42nd Annual Horse Shed Fair will be held on September 30th at the Bullfinch Church in Lancaster from 10 to 4 p.m. For more information, call 978-368-0731. The Lancaster Recreation Committee is looking for new members. For more information on how you can be a part of this group, contact Joe Kennedy at kennedy2004 at comcast.net. I'm Rebecca Powers, and that's what's happening.